morning, guys. Uh, Captain Chris Elliott here, down here in Baffin Bay area outside of Corpus. About four days post front. It's been real cold the last three days. Had water temperature all the way down to about 52. We're finally on the warm up day. Uh, it's dead calm right now, but we're gonna get a little wind here in a little while. Found some good fish the last couple days, but you know, real cold. They didn't really want to cooperate with us. Caught, 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 caught a couple good ones yesterday, a couple fours and fives. Once that water finally started to heat up, uh, it's, like I said, it was 52 two mornings ago. It's almost 58 right now. We're gonna pull in here, try to get up a little shallow, see if those fish are still cooperating with us. They've been hanging in the grass, you know, focusing on those sand holes. We've been dragging lures through the sand holes, catching pretty good fish. Uh, should be a pretty good day as long as the weather cooperates with us. So. We'll see what happens. Right on that grass. Get where this fish is hooked. You see that oh, hook came out. Look at that. You see him hooked the middle of the jaw like that. They're not really feeding yet. When you see it over here on the side, that's when they're turning, going for that kill shot. This fish barely hit it. They're not real aggressive yet. When you see that, you'll see it like right in the bottom of the jaw, dead center, or when you see it like right up there by the teeth. They're eating it, but they don't mean it yet. When you feel that double thump like everybody knows, that's when you see it in the corner of the mouth, stuff like that. That's when you know the, the feed's on. But we're still we're a little bit out from it. Water's still cold, too. All right, guys, a little update. It's been a little slow, which we kind of anticipated that. We're getting a fish here and there. Had couple decent ones but kind of knew we were gonna have to wait for the feed if you look you can see it there's the moon that moon is starting to set as soon as you see that you know you know miner's about to kick off just look we're about 30 minutes away from that miner so we're getting you know these fish are not quite committing to the lures yet they're bumping them slapping them they're not quite eating them but you can almost bet you give it another probably 15 20 minutes They'll start eating, those little taps will turn to harder and harder thumps, and you'll start catching fish. It's a good tip. When you see that moon starting to set, don't go moving around. If you know you're around some fish, just stay there, wait it out, fist through that miner. Don't go driving around. Just be patient, let the fish dictate what you do. Coming at me like an Olympic sprinter. Yeah, I set the hook and he was just full bore right at me. See, told you I kept seeing that mullet skip right there. Be looking now in the corner of the mouth, right where it needs to be. Good little keeper fish. Good little uh, 
about 21. Almost three pound fish. Right as the wind started to blow too. You just needed something to trigger them. Good fish. Goes. All right. Maybe 22. Fat fish. <laughs> okay then. You see that the sand kind of turns, there's that little grass finger right there? Yeah. It's the third fish I pulled off that finger. I think it's getting hit right here, little cubby hole. Got yeah. In the grass. You see these potholes, you don't just don't just drag a lure aimlessly through it. I like to work edges. Like yeah. Edges work run. edges. So if I see a, a little like a little island of grass. Oh yeah. You see a big sand pocket and there's a little island in the middle of it with grass. Cast all around it. If you see little fingers like that, basically a trout can sit there and look all around themselves and look for bait. Think of it as uh, fish is doing it the lazy way. <laughs> Holy man. Not on that grass, man, I'm telling you. He just coughed up like a five inch mullet. Did it really? Yeah, it's right here. I can you kick didn't it. See it Jimmy? Oh, what's, here's what's left of it. Right there. Oh, no. A big old piece of it broke off, but literally just coughed it up. About a three and a half. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's been hanging out at Golden Corral. He's still carrying a little bit of his holiday weight. It's been a productive little patch of sand. <laughs> so this is that. This has been the pattern. You you find one and you just plant your feet and work it. You'd be amazed how many you'll catch by just being patient and not walking through it. Well, you have. Well, it may not even be new new angling. Somebody's new to weight fishing or just not that experienced, they typically want to just keep walking. Yeah, they want to just keep walking. You know, they you get excited. And you think, okay, well, I caught one in that one. What's in that next one? And you have to kind of teach them and get people to understand if you catch one, especially if you catch one and it's been a slower day, you know, plant your feet, fish that spot for a little while. You know, give it a good 10 minutes at least. If you caught one, there was a reason that fish was there. You know, give it a good, like I said, give it a good 10 minutes, work it real good. Work all around it, you know. Fan cast, work it like a clock. And if you don't get anything in 10 minutes, then move forward a little bit. Yeah. But, this one right there. Yeah, if you learn to you know, slow yourself down, even when it's, even when it's a slow bite, that's when you, that's when you tend to see it. Even when it's real slow, you know, and you're not catching a lot of fish, people will tend to just, they want to just keep walking to see what's in that next spot. Well, yeah. if you're wading a flat like this and there's nothing in this sand pocket, what makes you think there's anything in the next one? You give it a little bit, you know, kind of let it develop like what we've had to do today. And you know, we've kind of hung around, let it develop. I mean, seriously, I mean, we've been sitting here for how long? How many fish we pulled out of? essentially one sand pocket yeah. you know I, I didn't even move once we started catching yeah. them i didn't move we we catch a solid what i'll do what i'll do and i'll tell people you know have clients with me and i'll tell them you know you get on something like that especially a big sand pocket like this don't walk into it stay off of it you know keep working the edges of it but walk you know kind of crab walk the side of it get yourself in a different position from hit it from another angle yeah. 
you know if you see a little finger but you can't reach it don't don't try to reach it you know walk around and get in a better position to make that cast hit it from all sorts of different angles that's something i don't think even the summertime you know typically they probably do like a little bit deeper but uh i've seen bobby pull an eight pounder in literally about eight inches of water yeah. and that was in freaking august uh, you know it's people I don't think a lot of people realize how skinny those big trout are. Like, mm -hmm. It makes it makes their feeding a lot easier. They don't yeah. have to. They, they don't, don't have, chase the bait. Chase exactly. There's nowhere for the there's nowhere for their bait to go. Yeah. When they're when they're that shallow, when they get shallow like that, they don't have to chase something up. They don't have to chase it down. There's nowhere for it to go. Once they see something, they can just kill it. I always like telling people that uh, big trout don't get big and fat by being stupid. Yeah, out there running a marathon. When you, when little, you yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you catch those little dinks, they're skinny. Why? Because they'll eat anything and everything that crosses their path. They'll fight over a little bitty piece of shrimp. Yeah, you know, we saw that this morning. It was all, we were catching all fish. Little fish. All the little juveniles that are just, it's like a teenager with a metabolism, just eating everything in front of them. That's something else that I've kind of, kind of thought about and kind of learned. Especially you know, in, in an area, if, you, if you've been fishing it and you know there's good fish there, you know, you've been catching them recently and there's good fish, and you pull in there like this morning and you catch dinks and you're not in a feed, no, I won't pick up and leave. Yeah. You know? The kid, the, just because that's what you catch, it doesn't mean that's the only thing that's Exactly. There. The kids always eat first. Yeah. You'll see that, I mean, even even any time of year, especially if you try to fish around a major or something and it's a good slow lunar pattern, you know, and you have like a good midday major, you know, right before that major, you catch a whole bunch of little fish and then they'll start getting bigger and then you're catching good fish. And usually once that bite starts to die, what happens? Those fish get small again. Yeah. You start catching dinks all over again. It's like those little ones will eat 24 seven, no matter what. But when the big guys pull up, they back off and let the big fish eat. And then when the big fish have had their fill. Yeah, the little guys can get eaten when the big exactly. ones are eaten. That's the other side of it. The little guys are going to get eaten by the big trout. Well, we're going to wrap up the day. Uh, overall, we I mean, started out kind of slow. Kind of had some weird winds going on, but... Once the wind kind of decided to pick a direction, bite kind of turned on. Ended up, I mean, we would have been keeping fish. We'd have limits, but we let everything go. Let go probably six or seven over 20. I think the biggest fish was three and a half, maybe four pounds. All in all, not a bad day for a pretty nice warm up day. Uh, we'll pack it in and get on home.